Hi everyone, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today I want to show you how to make a set of these golden mean calipers and I want to talk a little bit about what the golden mean is and how it can help you with your woodworking. Before we can get too deep into it, I do need to take about two minutes and just describe mathematically what it is and then we can talk about the significance. The golden mean or the golden ratio as it's often called is a really important number that comes when you take a line of any length for example and you divide it in a very special way. This line will have to be divided up in such a way that the longer part divided by the smaller part creates a ratio and that ratio has to be exactly the same as the ratio of the whole line to the longer part. I'll put that here for you sort of in some mathematical terms. And the longer part here is B. So the ratio of B to A has to be exactly the same as the ratio of the whole line divided by B, which is the longer of the two parts. Once you have a set of calipers, you'll magically be able to find that dividing point anywhere with anything. Then I could take these calipers, for example, and I could create a rectangle. I can create a rectangle now with ideal proportions. I'm using B, which is the longer of the two lengths, and creating a width for this rectangle. You should be able to tell that I have highly developed art skills, and that's why I became a woodworker. But now we've created an amazing thing. A rectangle that has these proportions is something that we call a golden rectangle. And that's really important in nature and in so many other facets of life. The golden rectangle is a ratio of B uh, to the whole line in this case. So it's a ratio of the width to the length that also falls into proportion with the ratios of the line and that just so happens to be 1.618 to 1 and that is the magic number. So what we're looking at is the series of Fibonacci numbers or at least the beginning part of the series and a little bit of a graphical representation of them. The series of numbers are kind of as follows. It starts with 0, uh, goes 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. The way this really works is that if we take any three numbers, oh, let's say these three for example, uh, then the number 8 is actually the sum of the two previous numbers that came before it. So 3 plus 5 is 8. And we can continue on in that same sequence. Uh, if we take a look here, we have uh, 5 plus 8 is 13, 8 plus 13 is 21, 13 plus 21 is 34, and so on. And if we take a look at any two of these numbers, uh, we'll have 55 and 34, for example. And if we put these into a ratio of 55 divided by 34, that ratio is 1.618 to 1, approximately. And that, as it turns out, is the golden ratio. Okay, so why is this important? It turns out that almost everywhere in nature, we find this ratio. The ratio of the forearm from the elbow to the tip of the fingers versus the elbow to the wrist is a 1.618 to 1 ratio and even the human face. The height of the face from the top to the bottom, as opposed from the bottom to the eyes, is also a 1.618 to 1 ratio. It's just amazing at how many different places we see this exact ratio show up. If we look at the ratio of the bones in the finger, 2, 3, 5, 8, those are Fibonacci numbers. Even the spacings between the chin, the lips, and the nose are Fibonacci numbers. This is a chambered nautilus. It's a classic example that we use to talk about the golden spiral and the ratios increasing. The shell on the inside follows the exact proportions of the golden ratio. This is the spiral created when we draw smooth line curves through the Fibonacci squares. It happens to be the exact dimensions of the human ear. And those same spirals appear on hundreds of thousands of plants throughout nature, from the seeds and a sunflower to the bottom of a pine cone. The same Fibonacci numbers appear in music and musical scales from all over the world. We can see here that one octave has a two black key group, a three black key group for five black keys total. There are eight white keys for a grand total of 13 keys in the octave. Those happen to be the first six Fibonacci numbers. And the same golden mean proportions even exist in the smallest things in the world. This is a DNA molecule, and the diameter of this DNA molecule is 21 angstroms wide, and one full twist of the spiral is 34 angstroms long. 
Those are Fibonacci numbers in the ratio of 1.618 to 1. We can even see the Fibonacci sequence and the golden mean ratios in the largest of all things, galaxies. From the spiral arms in the galaxy to the ratios of distance between them, we see the golden mean everywhere. This leads us to wonder why is it so important? It is believed that we perceive these ratios in the world around us all the time, even if we aren't consciously aware of it. And because of this, humans develop an innate sense of perfectly shaped proportions. However, most of us aren't even aware that it exists. Have you ever seen a woodworking piece that wasn't necessarily extraordinary in terms of the way it was built, but it just looked absolutely stunning? You might be surprised to find out that that woodworker built that piece with several of the dimensions falling in line with the ratios of the golden mean. And that's really the reason to have a set of these golden mean calipers. It's so that you can lay out or check proportions of something that you have. It's especially important for small items like keepsake boxes, jewelry boxes, uh, and things like that. So I'm going to show you how to build a set of these today and maybe you can apply this to some of your woodworking and see if that helps you out. I had some thin 1 8 inch thick leftover pieces of some exotics that were off cuts from some of the mallets that we make. This one is Bocote, but you could use actually any wood that you like. And there's a set of plans that will come with this. Uh, the plans are free to download if you're interested in them. Uh, it's real simple. They're just some templates you print out on a piece of paper, uh, cut those out, and then trace it onto the wood, which is what I've done here. It takes a couple of pieces. I think these are about 3 inches wide and about 12 inches long. Uh, a couple pieces of this and you can make yourself a pair of these golden mean calipers. After I cut them out, or I mean after I trace them out, then I cut them out with uh, my scroll saw here. You can do this with a variety of tools. You can do it with a bandsaw with a thin blade. You can even do it with a coping saw by hand. About four weeks ago, I saw a friend of mine, Colin Polzin. Uh, he's a guy from Australia. I saw him on video use a set of these, and that gave me the idea to show everybody here um, how to make a set. Uh, because it is a good thing to have around the shop, and not a lot of woodworkers are aware of it. And it's a really simple, quick project. only takes about an hour. And that's it. There's really just four pieces. We cut them all out, get them as close to the line as you can. Uh, the main thing that's important on these is the length and the location of the holes. The shape in between is not so critical. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just putting some double-sided tape to stick two of these together, the two that are supposed to be identical. And then I'm just going to sand down the edges to make sure they do end up perfect. And I'm going to use my one inch strip sander. Uh, you could use an oscillating spindle sander or just uh, put a piece of sandpaper on a wooden block and sand them flush that way. I want to take a moment to say thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. A lot of the videos that we do make, we actually make for the, for the Patreon supporters. They call in uh, or email in suggestions for things they'd like to see and we follow those. And thanks a lot to everybody there. And I'd also like to say thank you to everyone who uses our links in the descriptions below to buy some of the things they need from Amazon. Amazon donates a small percentage of that and that helps support our channel. So thank you to everybody who does that for us. Once that's done, you gotta be a little bit careful to pull them apart because you don't wanna break them. Uh, they're a little bit delicate. If you use a, a, a wood like pine or something that's a little bit softer, it might be a little more prone to breaking. So just take your time when you pull them apart and you'll be fine. Here's kind of a preview of what they're going to look like. All right, so I have sanded both sets here. We'll take a look at these. And you'll notice that for the smaller pieces, I actually cut them both to have the point all the way to the end. Uh, we're going to remove one of those later, but for now it's easier just to keep that point there. And once they've both been sanded, then I'm going to go ahead and start taping these things together so that we can drill the holes. It's important that the holes go in the same spot all the way through them, so we kind of want to secure them uh, for that purpose. Yeah. 
And I'm actually going to stick these together here as well because the top hole for the bottom ones also has to go through the two main ones. And then we'll take this over to the drill and I'm going to put a quarter inch hole in it. And I've got a type of a screw rivet that's going to hold these things together. And you can see this hole is going to go right through all four. I've got the round portion. Uh, they're all lined up and we're going to send this through all four at once. That's what's going to keep this alignment in perfect, uh, uh, or keep this in perfect alignment so that the calipers will work properly. Then we can pull it apart to drill the last hole which is through the bottom portion here. If you like these videos, uh, we'd appreciate it if you would click the like button down below and subscribe to our channel. And if you click that bell notification, then you'll know when we have new videos coming out. We actually have over the next three months uh, 16 videos planned, so a lot of those are in production and underway now. So hopefully about once every five or six days from this point forward, we're going to have a, a lot of videos coming out. So if you wouldn't mind uh, clicking that, that would help us out as well. Thank you. So these are screw rivets. They act a lot like a rivet, but it's a two-sided deal where one side's the screw and the other side is the nut, and they'll go together and hold these together. I'll put a link in the description below uh, where you can find a set of these. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive, and that's how we'll hold these calipers together. If you can pay attention to the build sequence here, it's a little hard for me to put this on paper of how these have to go together, but if you just watch closely here, then you'll be able to see. And when you build your own, you can follow this and it'll work perfectly for you. And there's a close-up shot of what these things look like and how they go together. So if uh, you might even be able to find these at a local hardware store like an Ace Hardware or something like that. But uh, I'll try to put a link for these in the description as well. All right, so remember I said I was going to leave the points on one of these long in order to do my drilling. And now I'm just going to be removing it because we don't need two points down below. So we're gonna just going to remove the point on one and get down to just the round portion like the plans actually originally called for. Okay, back to the build sequence so you can see what goes on top and what goes below, hopefully in this portion of the video here. And there's the last screw, so this is kind of a dry fit here to make sure everything works perfectly. You'll find that the screws might loosen up over time, and if they do, you could put a little drop of Loctite on the threads, and that would hold them steady. Uh, so the next thing we'll do is I'll take it apart, and we'll sand it down and get a finish on it. I also wanted to mention that if you have an interest in it, you could join our community group. We have a Facebook community group called 
Kingsfine Woodworking Community. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. It's a great place to uh, post your work, uh, share your share your work with others, kind of get ideas. There's a lot of woodworkers on there from uh, very beginning to uh, very advanced, even some master level woodworkers. And everybody there offers advice. And I write articles for the group. And I also post sales and things like that that come out. I usually get advanced notice of some of those. So we uh, well, we have a lot of information going on there. But I'll put a link to that in the description in case you're interested. Once it's all nicely sanded, I'm just going to apply a couple of coats of Danish oil finish. and I'll wipe off the excess after a few minutes and I'll let it dry and then we can assemble it. And once again, you can see the order in which these pieces will go when you do the final assembly. Okay, with the build complete, we're going to just do a little test. And if you remember, we've got uh, there's a longer side and a shorter side. Those represent the smaller of two Fibonacci numbers and then the big side. And the ratio of the longer to the big is the 1.618 to 1. So we'll give this a test. And I think I'll go ahead and maybe arbitrarily choose uh, 6 inches. And then that would be the longer of the two lengths. So 1.618 times 6 inches should be about 9.708 inches, which is about 9 and 3 quarter. So let's check and see how close these calipers come. So remember, that would be the long edge to the whole length. So the long edge is what I'm going to put at 6 inches. So we'll line one side up at 0. We'll stretch out the midpoint until it hits the 6 inch mark, which is right about there. And then we'll take a look at the right side and see where that's at. And that's just about right at 9 and 3 quarters when I get those lines lined up. So that's actually pretty good. And once you've made them, you can go around your shop and have fun checking things out. Like I'll check out my uh, Thor's hammer mallet and I'll check out the ratio of, say, the head to the overall length. And it looks like that follows the, uh, the golden ratio as well. In fact, a lot of things that are manufactured today follow that. We can even check out the width of the head in proportion to the length of the head. And that falls in line with Fibonacci numbers as well. You might even check out the screen on your computer. We can take a look here and see the width of the screen is very much in proportion to the height of the screen. So we would say that follows a golden ratio. And there you have it. That sort of completes our project. It's a really simple project. It's a fun thing to build and it's a cool thing to have around your shop. If you're laying out a project on paper or even on the wood itself, it's nice to have a set of these calipers at hand. You can actually make these any size you want from big to small. Um, this is just a, a small size that fits on a regular sheet of 8.5 by 11 paper. But you can scale this up as big as you want and uh, have fun with them. Thanks very much for watching. Perfect your faces. <laughs> <laughs>
Ja, 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 ja,